Hey guys, it's Chris. From lungs in perfect condition hundreds of years later to the fall of entire kingdoms, here are eight archaeological secrets that have been uncovered. Number 8. Queen's Lungs One of the most common finds in archaeology is burial sites and tombs with people who are long gone. And yet sometimes these bodies reveal mysteries all their own. For example, there's Queen Arnie Gunde, who was a Merovingian royal and the mother of King Chilperic I. Her body was found in Basilica of Saint Denis in Paris, France. Nothing out of the ordinary so far, right? So as archaeologist Michael Fleury continued to examine where the body of the queen was, he found something very odd her lungs. To be clear, the lungs of Arnie Gunde were still in her body, but were perfectly preserved, while the rest of her body was in fact completely skeletal. So how could the lungs be intact when the rest of the body was such a mess? This puzzled many scientists for years, until one group decided to take a look inside the lungs to see if any chemicals were present. Turns out there were. There was copper oxide and traces of benzoic acid, which is found in plants. Copper oxide is actually a preservative and can be used on jewelry to keep it shiny and other such things. Turns out Queen Arnie Gunde was given a concoction to drink after she died. Mummification was a thing back in the 6th century France when she passed, and this drink went into her lungs in some capacity. And when it did, the chemicals mixed, and it perfectly preserved the lungs. That's cool, but it's also kind of creepy. Number 7. Pukyos in Peru, near the Nazca Lines, which are another archaeological mystery that will likely never be solved, there are odd formations on the ground known as pukyos. They're odd because they're holes that go into the ground, have a spiral pattern, and are lined with rock. A very odd combination. What's more, the usual tactics to try and figure out what was the purpose of these holes were ineffective. Not the least of which was because if the Nazca made them, which was the theory, they didn't make any records of it. In fact, the Nazca didn't make any records of anything of theirs. So what was the purpose of the Pukyas? Well, it turns out it had to do with water. In 2016, an analysis of the area, the holes, and the history itself showed that it was part of a hydraulic system that was made so the water could go from underwater canals to various points on the lands, including the areas where the crops were, or to where populations were that needed water. The scientists who discovered this were actually really impressed by these pukyos, as it took a lot of work to make them functional and apparently they could still work today if they wanted to try to use them in Peru. But most importantly of all, this might have been the way that the Nazca people survived the harsh terrain that they found themselves in, proving even back then necessity is the mother of invention. Number 6. The Death of Urtyr Senyu Life and death are two very important parts of archaeology. You want to know how a person or society lived so you can understand them better. But only through their death, burial, and discovery can we truly learn about them. And yet sometimes the cause of death is the most interesting part of all. Take for example the Egyptian woman known as Urtsir Senyu. Don't worry if you don't know the name and please let me know in the comments if you know the proper pronunciation of her name. She wasn't a pharaoh or anything like that but she was mummified and she had a very curious cause of death. She died at around 50 years old which is young for an Egyptian in 600 BC and when her corpse was examined it was believed that she died of a tumor that was found on her ovaries. However as other scientists came in to examine the body they they found that the tumor was benign, which raised the question, how did she die? A further examination took place and what they found was really weird. Apparently, Urtyr Senyu died from pulmonary tuberculosis, a disease that affects many people to this day, and was indeed a terror in Egypt even back in 600 BC. Just goes to show that sometimes you need to dig a little deeper to get a mystery solved. Number 5. Feistus Disc Language is one of the building blocks of our world, and the desire to learn the languages of other people throughout all time has been a driving force in archaeology. In fact, a later entry on this list is a monumental achievement in that field. But focusing on this entry, there was a long-time mystery about an object found on the island of Crete that became known as the Feistus Disc. The disc itself was a mystery in many ways. 
It was six inches long, and what's more, it was made out of clay and had language written onto it on both sides, a language that was not known at the time. Their best guess was that the disc came from 1700 BC, which was known as the Bronze Age, but that's not for certain. Despite the disc being found in 1908, it wasn't till 2014 when its true purpose was discovered. Interestingly enough, it was meant as a type of prayer. It was meant to give tribute to the Minoan goddess of fertility. This was realized after a man named Gareth Owen spent six years translating certain words, one of which was quite frequent mother. Turns out one side of the coin is dedicated to a woman who's pregnant, and the other is for a woman who has given birth. Both things to pray to a goddess about for sure. Number 4. The Bodies in Masada It's interesting the discoveries we make in the most unlikely of places, and then when the truth is discovered it changes how we perceive things. A great example of this is the Masada Desert Fortress that's found in Israel. This fortress was once home to a massive suicide by a group known as Zealots, which is where we get the name for religious radicals. Over 2,000 years ago, the group wanted to overthrow the Roman government, but couldn't, so they decided to kill themselves rather than live with the shame. Fast forward to the 1960s and some archaeologists went into Masada and discovered some bodies in there that weren't there before. They could tell that two were male and one was female via a strand of hair they found. Believed to be members of the Zealot family, the state gave them honorable burials. Yet this is just the start of things, for an examination of the bodies revealed that these three weren't Jewish at all. Which begs the question, who were they? Well, the Bible actually helped solve that mystery. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, it's noted that if a non-Jewish woman is captured during a battle, her hair must be cut off in order to make herself less attractive to men. Studying the strand of hair that the archaeologists found revealed that the hair was cut by a sharp object likely a sword. So the woman was non-Jewish and the men were apparently Roman soldiers. Makes you think that maybe Israel regretted giving them those burials, huh? Number 3. The Soldiers at Durham I've noted before that graves and burial sites are a key part of archaeology, but they can be as baffling as they are important, especially when it comes to mass graves. Most times it's not clear why a bunch of people are buried in one area. Hence the mystery. One such case happened not even five years ago, when two mass graves were found near Durham Cathedral in England. And what made these graves so weird? Well, the people in them were young, only 13 to 25 years old. So how did they die and why were they buried there? After some literal digging and some research, it was found out that these graves belonged to Scottish soldiers. They were captured by Oliver Cromwell during the Battle of Dunbar in 1650. Once captured, they were marched from Dunbar to Durham Cathedral, which was 100 miles away for the record. If that's not unnerving enough, archaeologists believe that there are actually more bodies hidden under underneath the cathedral and its surrounding areas. The Battle of Dunbar was documented as fierce and bloody, and some 1,700 soldiers were said to have been captured during the battle. And these two mass graves didn't have anything close to that. Oh, and one of the spots they believe the bodies are buried? Well, it's underneath Durham University. How about a class project, anyone? Number 2. The Fall of Angor a sad fact of life is that all kingdoms will fall, no matter whether they call themselves kingdoms or not. The Greeks, Romans, Soviets, Egyptians, and more have all seen mighty kingdoms and empires rise and fall. But sometimes the mystery is in how they fall. Which brings us to the Khmer Empire, which once held the beautiful city of Angor in its name. Angor is a massive city, over 400 square miles long and actually very advanced. It was so big that it was actually considered the biggest metropolis of the ancient world, long before massive cities could be built with technology. Yet though it lasted over 500 years, Angor and the Khmer Empire soon vanished from the face of the earth. The city remained, but the people were killed. It was a mystery as to why. How could such a kingdom fall? Some felt it was the overuse of resources that doomed them. Others blamed wars with their neighbors, but the truth came from some new experts who decided not to look out, but within, specifically with the ground they were on. 
for it was soon revealed that the land that Angor was on suffered from extreme droughts. The people had built great devices to help fix this, but apparently it wasn't enough. Observing three rings, soil samples, and aquatic devices throughout the city, they discovered that Angor fell because they couldn't maintain the water supply, not even with their great advances. Without water, the people couldn't survive, and another kingdom fell. Number 1. Rosetta Stone Hands down, one of the greatest and most important archaeological finds in the history of the world is the Rosetta Stone. If for no other reason than this stone allowed the world to translate the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs that were a mystery to many for so long. It helped break down barriers and began a legacy of discovery into the kingdom, a legacy that continues to this day. So what made the Rosetta Stone so amazing? Well, it took the hieroglyphs of Egypt and then translated them into different languages, including Greek, which is a much more common language in the region. The stone itself was carved in 196 BC and was found in a small village called Rosetta in 1799. French soldiers were doing some rebuilding when one stumbled upon it and instantly took notice. Now, despite common belief, the Rosetta Stone didn't instantly let people read hieroglyphs. It'd be the same as if you read a script in English and then in Spanish without knowing the Spanish dialect. You could read the words per se, but you wouldn't know what they mean. Eventually, Jean-Francois Champollion figured out how to read the Rosetta Stone in 1822. And once he did, the ancient Egyptian language was open for business. Through this, the walls of pyramids and other long-standing Egyptian structures could be translated, and some things are even being translated to this day, and it's all because of the Rosetta Stone. Oh, and the popularity of the stone grew to such heights that it became a key part of the world's culture, being included in television shows, anime, and it's the name of a language learning program. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these secrets? Do you know of any archaeological secrets that you hope might be solved soon? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe before you leave, and I'll see you next time on World List.